Hi, it's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is fly. Let's look at a few definitions. The first way the verb fly is used is to mean to move through the air using wings. You might think of birds, ducks, insects, um, when you think of this particular meaning. Another meaning for this verb is to be carried through the air by the wind or by any other force or agency. A third meaning for fly is to move suddenly and quickly. A fourth way the verb fly is used is in a, a very informal way, so that this meaning uh, sometimes might be called slang. Uh, but that is to be acceptable, believable, or feasible, which is another way to say possible. We'll look at some examples of that a little later. Fly is an irregular verb. To make the progressive form, all we need to do is add ing. The past tense form of this verb is pronounced flew. F-L-E-W, and the participle form is pronounced flown, F-L-O-W-N. Next, let's take a look at some phrasal verbs. One phrasal verb that you might hear is fly about or fly around. These two phrasal verbs can have about the same meaning, which is to share rumors with many so, here's an example of that. Rumors have been flying about this past week, but no one has been able to confirm if they are true. So, the idea of flying about here is being shared with many, many people. Another phrasal verb that you might hear is fly at, and it means to attack. Here it is in a sentence. The dog flew at the cat when it came into the garden. Another phrasal verb that you might hear is fly by. And when we use this phrasal verb, we're almost always talking about time. Um, it could be any period of time from uh, an, an hour or even maybe a minute uh, to, to something longer, a year or a period of years. And its meaning is that time is passing quickly. Here's an example of that in a sentence. As I get older, the years just fly by. Another phrasal verb that you might hear is fly into. And it means to change emotion quickly. Many times it has kind of a negative connotation to it. So here's an example of that. He flew into a rage. So one moment he might have seemed fine or even happy, and then very quickly, his emotion changes to very, very angry. Let's keep practicing uh, with the verb fly, but now we'll try a few different verb tenses. Today, we'll practice the simple past, the present perfect, and simple future. Let's start with simple past. When we use this verb tense, we're thinking about a definite time uh, in the past when an action was completed. In the affirmative uh, simple past tense sentence, we're going to use that irregular form of our verb. It doesn't matter what the subject is, the verb will always be flew in the simple past tense. Here's an example. The month of May flew by. So that goes back to that phrasal verb meaning of, of passing quickly. If I want to make a sentence in negative simple past tense, I'm going to use did not and then the base verb, which is fly to make it. You might hear native speakers use the contraction form didn't, and that's okay. Um, as you speak and as you write, uh, you're welcome to do whatever feels uh, easiest for you. Here's an example of a negative sentence in the simple past tense. He didn't fly to Kansas City. 
he drove there. If I want to make a yes or no question in the simple past tense, I'm going to start with did, then I'll have my subject, and then the base form of the verb. Did the cat fly at the squirrel? Next, let's take a look at present perfect. I can use this verb tense in two different ways. One way is referencing something that has been completed in the past, but at an indefinite time. So I, I don't know exactly when something happened, and, and that might not matter. The other way we tend to use uh, present perfect is uh, for an action that started in the past and it continues into the present. To make an affirmative sentence in present perfect, I'm going to use have or has and then the participle form of the verb. Here's an example. She has flown to New York City twice. So in this uh, particular uh, way it's been used, we don't know uh, if she flew to New York City twice in the last year, twice in her lifetime, and that might not matter. If I want to make a negative sentence in the present perfect, I'm going to use has not and then the participle, or have not and the participle. Again, you might hear native speakers use the contraction forms, hasn't and haven't. Here's uh, an example of a negative. Many people haven't flown since the start of the pandemic. If I want to make a yes or no question in the present perfect, I'm going to start with has or has, then my subject, and then the participle form of my verb. Here's an example of that. Have you ever flown in a helicopter? Finally, today, We'll look at simple future, and today we're going to use will and our base verb to talk about future activities. As you know, probably from either class or studying on your own or watching these videos, there are a few different ways we can talk about future activities. Uh, today we're going to focus again on will and our base verb. We tend to use will. Uh, or, or this construction of the simple future, when we're talking about facts, predictions, uh, making offers or promises, or if we make a quick decision. So uh, let's uh, look at an affirmative sentence. Um, the nice thing about will is that it's going to stay the same no matter what our subject is, whether it's singular or plural. And then what comes after will will always be the base verb. Here's an example. Baby birds will fly when they are two weeks old. This might be an example of a, a fact. Um, uh, yeah. If I want to make a negative sentence in the simple future, I'm going to use will not and then the base verb. You might hear native speakers use the contraction form, won't. And that will, uh, that will be in uh, my example here. That excuse won't fly with the teacher. So uh, you might remember from the beginning of the video, I get the fourth definition I said was a bit informal or slang. This is an example of this fourth uh, meaning. So it, this sentence means that excuse won't be acceptable to the teacher. Finally, let's make a yes or no question in the simple future. We'll start with will, then we'll have our subject, and then the base verb. Will they fly later this summer? Let's take a look now at some words that are related to our verb fly. And the first is the exact same spelling, exact same pronunciation, but the noun form of the word fly. This word can have a couple different meanings. It could be a small flying insect. And you'll notice here on the screen, I've included a picture of one. And uh, I have an example sentence here. Cover the dish so the flies don't get in it. 
This is a sentence you might hear if you're eating outside or having a picnic. Um, you'll notice I've made the noun uh, plural, so more than one y. And when I do that, I drop the y, then I add i-e-s. Another meaning for the word fly is an opening at the crotch of a pair of pants closed with a zipper or with buttons and typically covered with a, a flap of fabric. So again, I've included another picture down in the corner of your screen. Here is a zipper flap. So here it is in a sentence. She forgot to zip her flap. Perhaps a fear everyone has. The next word we're going to look at is flyer. It's also a noun and it can have a couple different meanings. Before we talk about the meanings though, I want to point out uh, something that might look funny or different to you. There's really two acceptable ways to spell this word. You can spell it F-L-Y-E-R or F-L-I-E-R. And uh, I think I believe, from my understanding of this word, the F-L-I-E-R version was more popular long a long time ago, um, perhaps how it was originally written, but now F-L-Y-E-R is more common. So you can be confident, though, you spell it one way or the other, it should be fine. Um, and this isn't... Um, in many instances, there are differences between American English and British English. It doesn't seem like that's one of those differences. Um, you're just going to see people spell these things maybe different, different ways. Um, so let's look at some of the meanings. The first way you might hear flyer used is to mean a paper advertisement. So if you've been in a big city, you might have seen people handing out small pieces of paper, advertising, um, uh, tickets to a show or a particular restaurant or some other event. Here's an example of that in a sentence. They placed flyers on the windshields of all of the cars in the parking lot. Another meaning for flyer is a person or thing that flies. Um, here's an example of that. He's a nervous flyer. So this would be referencing um, somebody who's maybe a little anxious, uh, perhaps a bit worried when they get on an airplane. You'll probably see F-L-Y-E-R used um, by airlines as well uh, when we talk about frequent flyers. Um, or frequent flyer programs where they try and give you rewards for uh, booking uh, many tickets and, and completing many flights. Which leads to our last word of the day. Also, another noun, flight. This is just the action or process of flying through the air. Here it is in a sentence. Our flight went smoothly. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you have a great day.